you love me, please don't judge me Got my hands tied, the power's above me Don't shoot the messenger, I'm just a puppet here If you wanna place blame, then look to the puppeteer Family, fortune, envy, jealousy, privilege Passed on, legacy, secret, sabotage, borderline, felony Suicide, subtract, selfish, pedigree How's it going everybody? It's C Rad TV back here in our video and welcome to C Rad TV vlog number 31. So in today's vlog right now I am in Bowmanville, Ontario. As today we'll be heading down to the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park just up the road for the NASCAR Pinty Series Labor Day race. The WeatherTech 200, of course two races left in the championship. Mark Antoine Cameron enters this race 23 points ahead of DJ Kennington. So Cameron, if he right now with two races left, he controls his own destiny in the championship. So a solid run for Cameron means he could be in a really good position to clinch the championship at the end of September in Delaware. A bad run here, and we're going to have ourselves a very good championship fight entering Delaware for the fall overall in September. So yeah, we're getting ready to go. We're about to head out in a little bit. So just getting everything packed up and ready to go. Heading down to the track. A little cloudy right now, but there is a slight chance of rain, but it's not going to be till like after the race is over. So we're going to hit the rain on the way back home. But yeah, getting ready to go. Hey, getting ready to head to the track. So see you all when we get on the road. We're right, officially in the car. We just made a quick stop at Tim Horns. We're on our way to the racetrack now. We've got a 20 minute drive. Let's go. officially at the track now inside the infield for the track so the front straightaway seating where we'll be is way over there with the garage way over there we're about to walk on over and set up camp and again the track is a little more damp up in turn number five than it is pretty much in
autograph session at the NASCAR garage in the upper path. are covered right now because it was lightly misty and it's starting to lighten up but it's still kind of misting at the same time. Taylor. Throw number five from Grace Bridge, Ontario. 
the MDS Motorsports Access Storage Chevrolet number 31, Daniel Wow. Ninth, from Terrebonne, Quebec, the Motos Elite, DLGL Ford, number 39, Alex Garrett. Eighth, from St. Thomas, Ontario, the Castrol Edge, Cath Cart Trucking, CIM Metals Dodge, number 17, DJ Kennington. Yeah, let's go, DJ! Seventh, from La Chine, Quebec, the Viagra, St. Hubert, with, with ATN Chevrolet number 18, Alex Tagliani. Sixth, from Tuami Pierre, Quebec, the Weather Tech, Belmar Dodge, number 47, Louis Philippe, O.P. Dumoulin. Woo! From Roxton Pond, Quebec, the GM Pie Chevrolet Canada number 27, Andrew Ranger. Fourth, from Grimsby, Ontario, the FBM RGC Sports Quick Wick Chevrolet number 20, Triton Blitzovich. From St. Eustache, Quebec, the Napa Auto Parts, Valvoline, Lacroix Tuning Dodge, number 74, Kevin Lacroix. And your front row on the outside of row number one, from Halton Hills, Ontario, the new Tech Wood Dodge, number 59, Gary Flute. Olsen from St. Leonard Aston, Quebec, the GM Pie Chevrolet Canada number 96, Mark Antoine Cameron. Drivers, start your engine. Here we go, the second last race of the season, aka game six is about to go green.
for Matthew Scannell spinning somewhere deep in the woods over there up at three and four. We got Mark Dilly stuck in the grass over there in the wreckers over there with Matthew Scannell's car with what's left of it. And it seemed like he backed it straight into the fence. Win and uh, we're happy with that. 
Congratulations to Kevin Lacroix, second place finisher in first, but fourth place in third place. officially back in the car but there's like one more race that's supposed to happen today in like a sports car series we're not actually staying around for that we mainly came for the pin Diesel race and that's it so yeah mark antoine cameron got the win and extends his massive championship lead like it's safe to say that cameron is going to win this championship this year um i'll get more of my thoughts on the race when we get home i got a three hour drive ahead of us see you all when we get back <laughs> All right, I'm back home now in the confines of this room. So I'm going to go over some of the things I got at the track. And yeah, let's get through it. So first off, I have this new Kevin McQuaw Hero card, which shows the updated Napa paint scheme. So that's the front of it. And there's the back of it right there that has all his career accomplishments on it. Next up, I have the Alex Tagliani Hero card. That's the front. And there's everything on the back from his NASCAR career. It includes some stuff from his IndyCar career as well. I also got this one here of Ray Jr. Corda Mosh with his autograph on it, and that's the paint scheme on the back there. I also got a hero card for Dexter and Wallace Stacy with both their signatures on it. That's just how it is all there. Also got the TJ Renamato hero card, and there's nothing on the back there. Also got the Glenn Snyers hero card here signed, and then here's the back of it right there. So yeah, that one. I got the Andrew Ranger card here, which is just a photo here, and on the back is all his career accomplishments and everything on there. I also got the updated DJ Kennington one, which shows his updated Castro Edge paint scheme, and then all his accomplishments here on the back. So there it is that. I also got the LP Montura card right here, and then all his career stuff on the back right there. I also got a... Um, Hero card from Sam Fellows, and then here's the back of it right there. Everything, all his accomplishments so far. I also got two things here from LP Dumoulin. Here's his updated hero card, along with all his accomplishments here on the back. And also on the, I also got this thing from WeatherTech as well, and Dumoulin actually signed the bottom of it too, so I got a little keepsake here to accomplish here. And then next up, I have this big hero card for Daniel Bois. 
he actually when he was autographing this, he actually mentioned that he actually watches my channel. And said I actually do some pretty good work. So yeah, thank you to Brad Daniel Boy for that shout out too. So I'll give you a shout out here. So yeah, really what so yeah, you actually watch my channel. And there's the back of it here. This is a giant fucking hero card. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I don't think this one will fit in the book, but I'll have to find I don't know how much space I got here on the wall, if you can see. Because I got quite a bit here on the wall. But yeah, that's a pretty good hero card here too. So that's cool there. I also got this t-shirt here at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, which is just as Canadian Tire shirt here. So there's the front of it. And I can show the back of it here. This is the back of it right here, which just says it's Canada's legendary home of motorsports established in 1961. Actually, odd thing was, Daniel Bois' team was actually handing out t-shirts for MBS Motorsports. I would have got a t-shirt from him, but they didn't have one in my size, so I had to decline. But yeah, still, that's everything I got at the track this week. But anyway, I'm back in the room now. I actually have the cup race on in the living room and outside my room here. And that race currently is like 60 laps in in the, the Southern 500. A long way to go there. I know currently Wagano's leading, so still a long way to go. Anything can happen, especially at Darlington. But yeah, anyway, though, to the Rapinis race, it was actually a very interesting race, you know. It it had some mist early on in the day, but by the time I got the green flag, it was completely dry. Like, it wasn't sunny, it wasn't hot at all, it was just very overcast and cool. So, yeah, it was pretty okay racing weather. But, yeah, this race, it was pretty interesting. Like, it was mainly between Laqua and Cameron. Like, you had a lot of comers and goers through the field because of pit strategy, of when to pit and when to put tires on and all that. You know, Lapsevich had a really good drive because he had that penalty for pitting outside the box, had to be held a lap, got the lap back. And then, re and then rebounded all the way to get top five, so that's good there. And then Bergeron, he got a penalty, too, for bringing the fuel can out of the pit box and bringing out a caution. He came all the way back for a top ten. Even Sam Fells got his second top ten finish, so not bad for him. Like, it looked like early on, Cam Laquale was going to have the car to beat, but then the field shuffled out through pit stops with Ranger getting the lead for a bit. But then Laqua battled through the field, but in the end, he just could not get through traffic as good as Cameron. And once Cameron got the lead, Cameron never looked back. So Cameron gets his third one of the year. And now Cameron enters the season finale at Delaware in three weeks with a 33-point lead over Kevin Laqua. Like, it's safe to say Cameron's going to win this championship. He effectively has a clinch. Like, Cameron's clinching scenario at Delaware in a couple weeks is very straightforward. If there's if there's 30 cars or less in the field, or if there's less than 30 cars in the field for Delaware, Cameron just has to start the car and he's the champion. If there's 30 or more cars in the finale at Delaware, then you'll have to do a little work. But I think it's safe to say Cameron wins this championship. He effectively has well clinched it already. He just has to start the car and take the green at Delaware in the fall brawl, and he's the champion. Yeah, a bit anticlimactic for the finale, but hey, you know, sometimes that sometimes that happens, man. Sometimes you have championship seasons that go like that where a driver effectively has it clinched early. Like sometimes that happens. Like, hey, when it's your year, it's your damn year, man. But hey, shout congrats to Cam Rando on inevitably becoming the 2022 champion. You know, he's had you know, I mean Cam Rando, like if you're clutching a title about a race early. Then you effectively, then you more than likely deserve the championship. And Cameron, he's had a great season all year. He's been very fucking consistent. He's been the fastest driver all season. Like, he's even led more laps than any other driver in the Penny Series this season. And he also is tied for most wins this year with Kevin McCaw at three. So, in the end, I'd say Cameron is a deserving champion. He deserves it. So, yeah, congrats to Cameron on, if, on inevitably winning your first, his first career championship in a three weeks' time. He won't officially get the championship till Delaware. He just has to start the car, like I mentioned. But yeah, sometimes you have seasons that go like that. Not every season is going to be like F1 last year between Lewis Hamilton or Matt and Max Verstappen. And not every season is going to be like IndyCar this year where you have like, what, four, six drivers entering the finale with a shot at the championship. Like, sometimes it happens, man. Sometimes you have close battles. Sometimes you have battles where a guy just flat out runs away in the season. And before everyone complains and say, Oh, driver looking up a championship early. Who wants to see that? It's so boring. My Here's my counter-argument to that. 
It's called a season long champ points. It's called a season long championship for a reason. If you can't show up and perform when it matters the most, then you don't deserve to have a shot at the championship. And you know what? My argument to everybody else is, is that everybody else had 12 races to not put themselves to the position to where Cameron can lock it up early. They had 12 races to not be this far behind Cameron. Even when Cameron had his issues in, like, Saskatoon, nobody could capitalize on it. Like, or, or hell, at Canadian Tire Order this year, the two best chances, and even Toronto, the three best chances to catch on Cameron. And nobody took advantage of that time. Like, you know, everyone had 12 races to not put themselves in a position where Cameron could lock it up early. And everyone failed to take advantage of that time. So don't blame Cameron because everybody else's team is a poorly run dump. Blame yourselves. Like, don't hate the player. Hate the game. Like, just Cameron's had a really good year. He deserves the championship, no doubt. Like, no, but like, if you're clinching the title early, it really just shows that nobody was on Cameron's level this year in terms of consistency. Like, Cameron has been very fucking consistent all year. But yeah, still, um, you know. And also, Cameron gets the championship for Pi, Pi A Course Racing in their first season in the Penny Series. So yeah, Paye Course's first season in the series, and they win the championship in their first season. And it's only their first year. Like, if this team is this good now, imagine what Paye Course Racing could be in the Penny Series three to five years from now, when they get all the right pieces in place and establish themselves. You know, you know, you know usually, usually the argument is you have to win three to you have to wait three to five years to win a championship. But sometimes you can win it earlier than that if you already have the pieces in place. Like, I think we all knew this team was going to be good, especially having Andrew Ranger in, but holy shit. I did not think they were going to be this goddamn good. Like, good lord. Cameron just been out. Like, Cameron just had his first real good season. And it leads to a championship. I think it just shows that, hey, good things can happen when you have the right people surrounding a driver. And that Cameron can be a top driver in this series if he has the right pieces surrounding him. But hey, congrats to Cameron on the win. Well deserved. His the fifth career win, his third of the season. En route and uh, en route to winning the championship at Delaware. So yeah, of course, the next race is the finale in three weeks at Delaware. A very anticlimactic finale, but sometimes that happens. Like I said. Everybody had 12 races. They didn't take advantage of it. They put Everybody else put themselves in the position where Cameron could lock up the championship early. And even if you at take, even if you put in that 12-point penalty to Cameron again, Cameron would still be ahead by 21 points. Like, Cameron effectively would, have, would still have it locked up regardless, even with the 12-point penalty. But with the overturn, Cameron effectively locked it up early. But yeah, still, and the Fall Bro, I will be at Delaware for the Fall Bro at the end of September. So yeah, that's when the next vlog will be, end of September. But yeah, anyway, that'll wrap it up here. That's all I gotta say. Hope everyone's a great day, and I'll see you all over my next. Peace.